You are now entering the realm of white hot business. This is where we get real about why what happens in the bedroom and your body is a reflection of your business confidence and visibility. I'm your host, sexologist and business mentor, Lauren White, and I'll guide you to become the sovereign, magnetic, and sensual woman that's available for more success and satisfaction. Access all areas. It's time to transform your business from lukewarm to white hot. The timing of this episode could not be any more eerie. We are deep diving into the shadow work you need to do to expand your business. Why do I find the timing eerie? The truth is I am in the thick of my own shadow work right now. I am examining every single facet of who I am and my connection to everything and how all of that influences, for better or worse, what happens in my business. This is what I'm inviting you to do as well today. This is not the easy work, but as I like to say, it's not easy, but it's true. We need to be radically honest about what it is that's running your business what energy, what persona, what archetype of yours is actually running your business. This archetype, persona, this shadow of yours, it's not going to be running it 24-7. Here's how it will look, though. You'll come into some power in your business. You'll come into your authority. Something will happen, an incident, and your shadow will be activated to be the one that handles the problem, the situation, and that holds it. Women in business, for the most part, have shadows running their business whenever they are subscribing to the mindset, the customer's always right. I've just got to make them happy. I've just got to give them what they want. I can make it cheaper. I can discount it. Anything in a similar vein to what I've just said means that you have your little girl energy running your business. We are here today to course correct that. We want your business to expand and what I know to be true is your business cannot expand until you go to the deep places that you've been avoiding. What I want you to know is shadow work is incredibly fun, illuminating, and playful if you let it. It doesn't all have to be hard, grueling, dark. That's not actually what all of shadow work is. What it does is it invites us to question, how is a part of me complicit in what I say I don't want to be happening right now? What part of me is secretly enjoying this, liking this, benefiting from this, what part of me is getting a kickback or getting paid under the table from this? Like I say I want more money, but I keep creating conditions where I don't have money. That means your shadow is running your relationship to money. And when you run a business, it's these kinds of reactions and these kinds of patterns that we need to address fast. Let's all take a breath. (laughs) I want to highlight a few things I've already said 
a little bit of shadow work 101, 101 before we move on. Shadow work is talking about parts of you. You are not broken. You are not fragmented. The whole of you and the complexity of you and how dynamic you are is made possible by all of these parts coalescing. Sometimes they cooperate, sometimes they don't. And the shadow ones are particularly strong because it's what we've repressed usually over many years. Desires, impulses, fantasies. So when I say a part of you, I mean a part of you. The more you suppress and don't speak to that part, the bigger the part is going to be and the more it's going to overshadow and keep you suspended from what it is that you say that you want. I want you to know that you are up for this that you are able to play with all of these parts and to remember that these shadowy parts are actually what's going to get you to your most illuminated self. Shadow work is illuminating. That's not a paradox on purpose. It will highlight what it is that you haven't been able to entertain within your mind, within your life, within your business because of fear, because you were told that you weren't able to or it wasn't safe or it wasn't allowed. You are so much more than the good girl persona, the people pleaser, the martyr that is at the helm of your business. You are so much more than that. You are so much more powerful than that and you are so much more pleasure-filled beyond that or you will be when you start to look at these parts. This is, I'm going to come out of the closet, this is one of my favourite parts of the work that I don't speak publicly about often enough. Why don't I speak about shadow work more often? I have to navigate my own (laughs) shadow right now in talking about shadow work. (laughs) When do the paradoxes end? They never do. Thank you, Oscar Wilde. Uh, (laughs) I have to navigate the shadow that's telling me or has tried to tell me to not talk about shadow work. And it's actually the deepest, most clarifying and most effective way to get you closer to what you want or to support you to grasp what it is that you want. I've seen absolute magic happen in myself and in my clients when we do this work. And it all comes from a place of we're not going to fear the fear. In fact, we're going to turn the volume up on it ever so gently and with your consent and we're going to face it, feel it, experience it, pick all of its parts apart and then we're going to get to the root thing which is always there is a part of you that enjoys this. There is a part of you that enjoys this bad thing that you say that you hate, this thing that you want to fix. How wild is that? It's like, no, but I don't. I don't. Before you say you don't like the fact that you don't have more clients or more money or more impact or more stage presence or more gravitas or more magnetism, whatever it is, Just slow it down. Slow everything down for a hot minute. You can both not want something to happen and be benefiting from it not happening. There is a part of your brain 
that is more comfortable with what's familiar, even when it's causing you discomfort. You are so human. You are human. So I want you to think right now about the thing that you say that you hate, the thing that you want to be different. I want you to start on the note of, I don't want this anymore. What's the thing you don't want to happen anymore? I don't want clients to walk all over me. I don't want clients texting me at 10 p.m. I don't want people to complain about my prices. I don't want people to be late on paying their invoices. I don't want, I don't want. Okay, keep going. What's the thing? What's the biggest thing that is repetitive and causing you the most distress according to you and your experience? What's the thing causing the most distress, the most disruption? Choose that thing. You'll already know. Don't say, I don't know. You already know what the biggest thing is. We're not calling it a block. We're not calling it any other name than the thing. Identify the thing. Really feel how much I don't want this to happen anymore. I don't want it to happen anymore. I don't want clients to be late on their invoices anymore. Okay, good. You found the thing. The repetitive thing that you say that you hate and you don't want anymore. Now that you've put it in the negative, I want you to put it into the framework of desire, what it is that you do want. I want clients to pay their invoices on time. Can you say that? Or whatever your version of what it is that you want. I want clients to pay their invoices on time. I want clients to pay their invoices as soon as they see them in their inbox. I want clients to say, send me the invoice and I'll settle it right away. I want, I want, I want, I want. Take a breath. Make some sound. (sighs) Now, put the I don't want and the I do want side by side. What happened in your body when you started saying I don't want and what happened in your body when you started saying I want, I want, I want? And if you were brazen enough to speak those words out loud, What changed in your voice or how easy was it for you to say, I don't want this and I don't want that, I do want this and I do want that? Was there a difference in terms of how easy it was to express, I don't want this and I do want that? Go over what you've just done with a fine-tooth comb And truly get honest with yourself about what you felt in your body, where you felt your heart race, where you said you hate something, where you said you're sick of something, and how easy was it for you to say, I want this other thing. If it was hard for you to say, I want this other thing, and your voice felt softer, quieter, or your inner monologue, your inner dialogue felt softer or quieter, there's a reason for that. What that tells me is you're getting so much arousal, anger, bitterness, resentment, you're getting so much arousal from the I don't want that the I do want can't even compete. It doesn't even have a chance. It doesn't even have an opportunity. I don't want is so far ahead coming first in the marathon that I do want is still at the start line, going, "Mm," shrugging. When you realise that the charge in your body is hardwired to get off on I hate this and I don't want this and I'm sick of this and they disrespect me and it's so rude, 
when you realize that that's giving you a hit of something that is missing from your life, that is missing from your expression, that's when you'll start to move more into the realm of desire, where you can start to say, my clients pay their invoices on time. My clients pay their invoices the second that the invoice hits their inbox. This is where you can start to speak with desire and start to experience it as a truth and as a reality for you because you've cleared and addressed all the other stuff somewhere else. You've gotten your hit somewhere else and you don't need the anger to do it for you anymore. You don't need the no and don't want to do so much heavy lifting. Women in business suppress so many natural primal feeling states that it's no wonder that when they don't have an outlet, all they can do is be expressed through your business, which you're working so hard on, so consistently on. It makes sense. That energy has to go somewhere. You can't just sit there with a fake smile all day, closing your mouth and hoping that people don't pick up on the truth that you're frustrated and pent up and angry and bitter and resentful. You will be your most illuminated self when you stop putting the pressure on your business to be able to hold all of your animal animalistic, primal, raw feeling states. You have an opportunity to express them elsewhere, to express them through your movement, to express them in the bedroom, to do role play, to do drama, to do acting, to do anything at all in your life outside of your business so that when you show up for your business, you are the clearest expression of what it is that you're here to convey and the message that you're here to spread. Let's pause. (laughs) This is big. This is huge. And it's going to expand your business potential when you get honest with yourself over and over and over again. Your shadow is not scary. Your shadow is this quivering part of you that never had an outlet. That's all it is. And it's just trying to be released from you through your voice, through what you don't say, through what you say you don't want, through your anger, through you saying, I'm fine, it's just looking for an outlet. Whenever something that you say that you don't want to happen in your business happens, I want you to pause. Rather than go, this always happens to me, or my clients just are crap at paying their invoices, I want you to pause. I want you to do a few things. First, I want you to really think about how you pay your invoices. Do you lag on paying invoices? Do you do it last minute? Are you crap at paying invoices on time? Do you always need follow-up? Where is the mirror for you? Clients are doing this in your business. Where is it happening? Where are you engaging in this behavior as well? First question. Second question. When you feel the charge in your body of my clients always do this and it's crap and I don't like it, where are you getting aroused? Where are you saying I'm over it and I'm sick of it, but it's really giving you something that you're you're not allowing yourself to have in other aspects of your life and human dynamics? 
Where are you not allowing yourself to be passionate and to feel angry and injustice about something that's way more important than clients not paying their invoices on time? Where can you express that sense of injustice and that anger? How can you put it towards a movement that's actually going to make a difference in the world? It's a part of you that wants release. So pour it into a channel that's going to be fruitful and going to have an impact and maybe even leave a legacy for you or a charity or a foundation. You're getting caught up in something small and puffing it up when really it needs to go into something more generative because it's destructive to you. And it's turning down the volume on your magnetism, your power, and your pleasure. The next thing is start saying what you do want. This is what I want. And what action do you need to take from there in order to set everything up for your clients so that they pay you on time? Where are you not plugging leaks in your business on purpose in order to keep this self-perpetuating problem occurring? I've just used that one as an example because it felt tangible and easy, but it could be something else for you. Where can you plug the leaks? Where are you going, oh, it'll be all right, oh, I'll leave it, oh, it's fine, oh, I don't mind? And how can you tighten up your processes? How can you start to use your throat to express to clients? These are the changes that are happening from the 1st of July. This is the new invoicing system. This is how you can now pay. This is the time frame. If you need a payment plan, let me know. And payment plans may attract 10% extra. I'm only saying may. Will attract 10% extra if you choose to follow that possibility for you. What I'm really getting at is doing this kind of work is an opportunity to clarify your power first and foremost to get you letting go of control and coming back into power. And something I like to say is stop chasing control when you actually want, when what you actually want is power. So stop chasing control and doing this weird dance with control and having these same things happen again and again and again and pointing to everything out there when the problem is it's your shadow that's getting a hit of arousal and a hit of recognition from this bad, quote-unquote, bad thing happening. You have parts inside of you that are hardwired to rebel and be bad and be cheeky and be frisky and be seductive and be sexual. Give them a place to go. The more you keep the lid on all of those parts and try to be good, try to be seen as a certain way, try to be seen as nice, the more those parts are going to keep pushing up, creating tension, creating pressure for you and being expressed in ways that don't expand your business. It will come up eventually. It will come up in the most undesirable way because there's been no release. It could just explode. It could be an affair. It could be that you want to blow up your business. It could be that you tell off the biggest potential client that you ever have. It could be that you stuff up the biggest speaking gig of your life. Your responsibility as a red-blooded woman 
is to learn and stroke and love on all of your parts, all of them, especially the ones that haven't had space, the parts that haven't been seen and the parts that haven't been heard. They're not wrong and they're not bad. They are aching for release and acknowledgement. Give them that and they won't sabotage the things that you say that you love or the things that you say that you want to have and claim in this lifetime. All of this comes back to you knowing who you are, knowing yourself first, knowing your design, knowing your power, knowing what turns you on, knowing your pleasure, being honest about what gives you pleasure, even when you think society is going to think it's bad or it's unbecoming. Own it. Own it. It is what makes you unique and source the most divine, purest, healthiest expression of that energy, of that charge, of that persona. Do it for you and do it for every other woman in your orb. We all need permission. We all need to express. We are dynamic. We are not just light. We are so dark and it's so exquisite and beautiful. Incredible things grow in the dark. And if you are listening to this, I know you're deep. I know that you're deeper than deep. So stop going surface for light and scalability and everyone loves me in my business, stop. Go deep. Go deep and you will climax higher. None of what I've just shared is a luxury, by the way. This is all a necessity, a powerful invitation for you to go deeper on yourself so that you have a richer business and a richer life in every definition. If you do this, you are effectively curbing the midlife crisis, the quarter life crisis, the three quarter (laughs) crisis that has you looking in the mirror one day going, who the fuck am I? I don't even know who I am. I'm an amalgamation of all these things that I thought I should be. You do this and you never have questions like that because you do this work on the fly. Every time something happens that I say I don't like, I'm pausing and and looking back at how am I complicit? Where am I saying I'm sick of this thing, but really it's giving me this out with this other thing because I think that creates way more problems or way more effort or this keeps me suspended here so that this has me being seen this way by this person or keeps me in this dynamic. It is a gold mine of information and questioning, 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 questioning. I'm always asking myself the hard questions because it gets me to my pleasure faster than checking out, faster than glossing over. I understand if this feels big for you, if this uncharted terrain is feeling too much or you're curious but you just don't know where to start, you're in a bit of overwhelm. Here's what I want to say to you. Start small. Start now. Start asking yourself questions, honest questions about what you're really getting out of 
things staying the same because you're getting something. And it's not sick and twisted. It's your humanness. So face it, acknowledge it, and try and get arousal or charge from other sources so that it doesn't feel so appealing to stay where you are. You are made to evolve. You are made to grow. And I'm so excited for you that you are going to grow in one of these two ways because I've got two things for you today. The first is the five ways to plug into your power and pleasure before your next speaking gig. You need this. You want this. And we need to clear the blocks. We need to address the shadows. We need to get real about what it is that's keeping you suspended from being powerful and pleasurable when you get on stage. Speaking to an audience could be the thrill that your shadow wants but isn't getting right now because you're staying small, you're saying no one can see me, no one can hear me, or the right people aren't seeing me, the right people aren't hearing me. That is a you thing. When you own that, you can start to absorb and integrate the ways that are going to improve and enhance your speaker power, prowess, and presence. I have broken it down for you in this free training. You have to claim this because we need to hear you. We need to hear you in your business. And being heard is one of the ways that you are going to organically expand. If you don't speak, nothing moves. There is no momentum. There is no traction. There is no legacy. So let us hear you and be honest that you want this. I've got the link in the show notes as well as an opportunity to work with me privately in a climactic intensive to look at releasing the shadows from the helm of your business so that you can start working from a place of desire. What it is you want, what it is you envisage for your business, what your biggest fantasies are, what you want to move from living up locked in your brain into a tangible reality. And you can tell, I want this for you because I'm using my hands (laughs) And bumping my mic. This is fully available to you, a business that turns you on and everyone that enters into your magical world. Every single touch point can feel like the arousal and the life force giving, blood pumping yes that people are craving and looking for out there and living in the shadows, trying to get, but they can't access. You go first. You look at this for you and then everyone can move towards you and access what you have from a place of desire and wanting. No more crappy clients, no more people paying you late, only clients that say, I am excited. Where do I sign up? How do I pay? When do we start? When you do this for you by accessing something that you want, like my climactic intensive, then people can access your business in the same way. You go first, you set the standard. This is all here 
and waiting for you. I've sent out the invitation and now it's on you to say yes to it. The way to say yes is in the show notes.